everybody, Chef Jill here, welcome back. So today I'm gonna address one of the questions I get most often, and literally I get this question almost any time I go anywhere and people know what I do for a living. And that is, what does it really take to be a chef? They may not ask that directly. What they'll say is something like, my kid, my family member, my friend wants to be a chef. What do they need to know? What do I need to know about what that really means? I think we have this impression that a celebrity chef is an actual chef and that all cooks are chefs. We talked about the difference between cooks and chefs a couple episodes ago, so make sure you go check that out if you haven't seen it. There's a huge difference between being a chef and being a cook. There's also a huge difference between being a celebrity chef and being a regular chef. Just like there's a huge difference between being a celebrity mom and being a real mom, or being a celebrity athlete and being a real athlete. And I think Food Network, for all it's worth of, of exposing America to different cooking styles and different ways of creating recipes, that's all great. But it does give you the false impression that being a chef means being on TV, means being famous, means cooking these amazing dishes. And for the most part, the chefs that you know, the cooks that you know, are working crazy hours, they're in hot conditions, it's a lot more stress than you realize. So what do you need to know as the support system, as the parent, as the friend? You need to know that they're probably gonna change their mind <laughs> at some point during this process. They may go to culinary school or start the culinary school process, they may sign up for some classes at their local trade school, they may do all sorts of things to get the ball rolling, and then change their mind halfway through when they realize that not everyone gets to be, you know, Alton Brown. Not everyone gets to be Emerald. Not everyone gets to be a celebrity chef of sorts. So that is definitely a possibility and something I would be prepared for. Another thing to be prepared for is that it's a very lumpy path. This is not an easy go to college, come out, get a job and progress up the ladder kind of career. The best chefs in the world have worked at multiple places throughout their life. They've stodged at different restaurants and cities, which basically means they followed them around and learned what they do. They have really traveled quite a bit. They've worked coast to coast. They've taken opportunities when they come up, which means that they may be crashing on friends' couches. They may be a little bit transient for a while. Those kinds of things happen because cooks make zero money, make very, very little money, which is something else to be aware of. A chef does not typically work for their salary, meaning that they don't take the job because they're gonna make a ton of money doing it. It's, it's a passion thing, like teaching or like nursing is. So be aware that it's gonna be a little bit lumpy. The career ladder is a little bit askew. Maybe you're jumping from ladder to ladder. There's a lot of unpredictability in this field. And when I went to culinary school, I graduated in 2003 which was post 9-11 and pre-recession. So post 9-11 meant that the transportation industry took a huge hit. If you worked in the airline business or even the hotel business in late 2001, 2002, you got hit really hard. You probably lost your job, got laid off, got furloughed. When the recession hit, tourism took a hit and the restaurant industry took a hit. If you were working at the type of restaurant that served fried stuff, you were fine. <laughs> but if you worked in fine dining, if you worked in a French restaurant, if you worked in an upscale hotel, there really wasn't much for you. You were either let go or the jobs kind of disappeared. And that's what happened to me, which is why I ended up kind of transferring around and now I work for myself. So there is some lumps you have to go through. It is an economic job. Uh, depends a lot on how the economy is doing. And right now the economy is lumpy. So while there are food service jobs available in some of the tourist hotspots like beach towns and eventually Vegas when people get comfortable with flying again, your local eateries probably aren't hiring and they're probably having to deal with the fact that some of their staff have moved on to other places that stayed open during this whole closing craziness. So those are a couple things to be aware of that are really important when you're talking to them about the logistics of being a chef. So another question I get is, you know, that friend, kid, family member, they know so much about the food industry. Like they understand how restaurants work. They know the difference between Iberico and Serrano ham and they want to be a chef. It's not really a question, but it's more like a humble brag, I guess, that their kid watches Top Chef and that they know how to do everything and they know how to make mirepoix and all these things. And that's all great. And I'm, I'm so happy that they have a passion and something that they're interested in. I've loved cooking my entire life, but that's not what it takes to be a chef. That knowledge is, is awesome, but it's not gonna help 
on a Friday at seven o'clock when you're standing over a grill plate and you have three square feet of space between you and the person next to you who's on the fry station who's screaming at you and the servers behind you are coming and there's plates slamming and things are going and you have a, a dining room full of people who want to eat and get to their Broadway show or they want to get home to their family or they want to get to the movie that's so that they're not late that's what it really is. And if you're standing there on the hotline and you're telling the person standing next to you about the difference between Serrano and Iberico ham, they're not gonna have time for that. <laughs> they're not gonna like you very much. So that knowledge is great and encourage them to have it as a hobby. But if they are more of an intellectual, if there's someone who appreciates the science of cooking more than the actual labor involved in it, I would encourage them to go into like a food science program at a college or maybe get into teaching get into development, recipe development. Maybe they can get into procurement where they're out and they can go to Spain and they can procure these amazing hams for restaurants and different food service establishments. Those are the kinds of jobs that they would probably really do well in versus the grunt work. And if you're still convinced or they're still convinced that they can handle that Friday night craziness and that they really want to create and they want to be in a kitchen, take them to some demo kitchens. Take them to restaurants in your local area where you can see the cooks working. And don't take them at four o'clock on a Tuesday. Take them at eight o'clock on a Friday or nine o'clock on a Saturday when they've already worked 10 hours, you know, they've already been there since lunchtime, if not before, creating all their mise en place, doing all the work, getting the kitchen ready to go, and they're still churning out plate after plate after plate after plate. That's what it's really like. It's tough work, it's sweaty work, it's long hours, it's a lot of sacrifice, and you work holidays and weekends and nights and crazy shit, especially if you get into like the cruise line industry. I have talked to so many people who work in the cruise line industry, and the amount of hours that these people work is unbelievable. It's an amazing opportunity to be able to see the world and to be able to tour around, but most of the time, about 16 to 18 hours a day, you are in a kitchen on a boat. <laughs> you are not out touring like the guests on the cruise ship are doing, you are working and you are trying to keep thousands of people fed, which is a lot of work. So make sure they do their research and make sure that even though they're smarty pants and they know everything about the culinary industry, that they actually know everything about what working in a real restaurant is actually like, because it's hard work. The other thing that people ask is, so they get through all that, they get through my reservations and they get my information about what culinary school was like and what types of jobs I did after culinary school, which I gotta tell you, I went to a culinary school that was about twenty to $22,000 a year. Um, and that was in 2002, so keep that in mind. I graduated top of my class and I went on an externship to a conference center in Georgia. That externship paid me $10 an hour. So when you're coming out of culinary school with somewhere in the neighborhood of, I was between like 55 and $65,000 in debt and you're making $10 an hour and you have to have an apartment and pay for your car and your gas and all the things that you theoretically would want to keep in your kitchen to eat when you're not working, money gets tight just like a lot of other types of careers. So that's something I always tell people about too. Not to say that culinary school isn't important. It is important, but it does cost money. And you are paying for not only the salary of all the chefs that are teaching you, but you're also paying for all of the food that you're using. So that's why culinary school is so expensive. But let's say they decide, yes, I wanna to go to culinary school. I don't wanna go and gain experience in a chain restaurant as opposed to going to culinary school. I wanna take the straight and narrow path I wanna go into a program. My local college offers a food and beverage program or hospitality program, and that's what I wanna do. I wanna go and get a degree. Where should they go? What should I do next? Cause I know this is what I wanna do for a living. I've already talked about all the negatives. My suggestion, and this is coming from somebody who didn't do this, <laughs> coming from the opposite side of the table, I didn't do this. My suggestion is to get a four year degree in something. If it's food related, that's obviously optimal. But even if it's not food related, here's the reason why you want a four year degree your negotiation of salary increases when your education increases. And that's pretty much in any field. A nurse with a master's degree is going to be able to command a higher salary than one with an associate's degree, right? RNs make more than LPNs. So that's just something to keep in mind in a parallel career path. Same thing here. And in my situation, the recession hit in the middle of me trying to create a life for myself, you know, have a home and have a lifestyle that wasn't just work. And when that happens, when the bottom falls out, 
if you have education in your background, you have the capability to apply at places that are Monday to Friday gigs. So you'll be able to get through those lumpy periods easier than everyone else without having to resort to delivering pizzas or working at Subway or something like that just to kind of keep you above water. Another really important thing to note about culinary school is if you go to, like let's say you go to an associate's degree program at your local tech school, which is what I did. I got an associate's degree in culinary arts and a Le Cordon Bleu diploma from a school in Chicago that's no longer operating, but it was then. <laughs> Degree's still good, I promise. But let's say you go that route and you get your associate's degree. I would also encourage you to look into other types of other aspects of the restaurant industry that you might be interested in. For example, the front of the house as well as the back of the house, or the economic, the accounting side of it if you are a math person. Maybe the nutrition side of it, go get your degree or go get a certification for nutrition or dietary. Uh, dietitian work because those are other avenues that you can use or other avenues you can pursue should restaurant jobs be a little harder to find or should the income not be where you want to be otherwise you might be out there selling Sensi or um, <laughs> or LuLaRoe or something to make ends meet which is not ideal when you're working crazy hours. So I hope I was able to answer some of these questions about what it's really like. Of course, you have the comment section down below if you want to send me any of your questions or comments. I really look forward to hearing from all of you. You'll have another video from me shortly. Take care of yourselves and each other, and I will see you next time. Bye.